Because according to your faith, so is it going to be done to you. Huh? So is it going to be done to you. In other words, I'm going to give you as much as you can believe for. Huh? If I have a terrible wound and it's bleeding profusely and all I pray to God is stop the bleeding, then that's what God will do for me. But if I say, God, stop the bleeding and heal this wound, then God is able to do that too. See? But we are the ones who put limitations on God. He was telling us this morning, don't limit me. Don't limit me by your unbelief. So, God wants us to know, understand, and realize that when he calls us to repentance revolution, we should let that thing go as deep into us as we possibly, possibly can. In other words, abandon all shutouts to God. How many of you know you love to keep little closets and drawers and hidden places that God's not allowed in? Hmm. It could even be just a little box you won't let him in. But the thing is, we stop God from coming in to possess all of us. We don't want to be his possession because we want to be able to say, I don't believe that. I don't think he's going to move like that. I think this. I think that. Why? Because we want to be God. Hey, folks, we're not God. You're not God. I'm not God. He's God. And the sooner we get the reverence for him and lack of reverence for self, the more that we can cooperate with God. Like I said, why don't we just adhere to our duty in gladness without giving God all these poo-paws, whinings, complainings, mutterings, moanings that just slow down the progress of what God wants to do. Hmm? It's like when you have a room full of children, say like a kindergarten class, and each one just wants to putter. And you're trying to get them, you know, so you can take them on a field trip or take them on a walk or whatever. And each one's got their own little special whine, their own little special complaint, their own little special muttering, and maybe sniveling and bawling and on and on. And they won't move because each one has to put on their show. Finally, you get fed up and you just say, okay, if you guys don't hurry up, we're not even going to go. Hmm? You'd be surprised how quickly they can drop all that. Well, that's how God feels. He says, hurry up or we're not going to go. In other words, get in line, get in your duty, do what you're meant to do with gladness and rejoicing. Now, we shouldn't have to be admonishing in here to do what we're supposed to do in the right attitude. We should just be doing it. Okay, so it says here that he's not dull, so don't put it on God. He's not deaf. Then he goes down to the real cause, the real issue, and he says, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So what do we see here? We see that there is an active demonstration of the will of God against you because of your iniquities and your sins. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. It says, because of those things that you have done, he will not hear you. It's not because he's deaf, it's not because he's dull, it's not because he's thick and dumb. It's because you have done the things out of your will, honey. Out of your will, choosing iniquity, choosing sin, choosing pride, choosing unbelief, which is sin. That he says he won't hear you. Hmm? He wills himself in his will to not hear you if you continue in your iniquity and your sin. Well, I prayed. And it just don't seem like the Lord hears me. Well, of course not, you whining, self-pitying, sniveling sot. You're wanting to be the center of attention. You're wanting God to think you are worthy of so much, and you're not even ceasing your sin in your attitude. 
Whoa, well, Sister Deborah, I think you're just mean because I'm pretty pathetic. No, you're pretty repulsive. Hmm? Because you want me to focus on you, and I'd rather focus on God. Huh? So, he's saying there that it's your, your doing that causes God to will his will against you. So, if you don't feel like you're getting anywhere in the repentance revolution, guess what? You're not repenting enough of your sins and iniquities. Hmm? Because you know when you really get serious and ask God to show you, and so what if it's just attitude? So what if it's unbelief? So what if it's, uh, you know, doubt or accusation against God? Repent over it. And then God will take you on to repent for the sins of the so-called Christians and repent for the sins of the nation. But we must be willing to enter into and remain in that repentance revolution because that's God's call right now. We can't say, well, I'm going to go back and entertain myself and put on a show of Azusa Street. Did you know that that Seymour, who was the um, black brother who prayed for that Azusa Street revival, did you know he prayed for seven years before anything ever happened that was visible? Seven years. Well, I've been praying for about three days. You big fake. See, we just don't give enough of ourselves to God. And God wants all of us. Now, is it true? We are meant to be his possession. That means that if he owns us, he's the boss. He can tell us what to do, how to do, when to do, and why to do. Or he doesn't even have to do any of that. He could just say do. And we're supposed to obey him. Amen. Okay, going on, it says, For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. How many give way to cursing? When you could just say, thank you, Jesus. And instead you want to show how manly you are. And so you say, damn it. Huh? Damn what? And then that's not good enough. Then you got to slip in other little ass, because that's in the Bible. Damn it, ass! <laughs> then you got to say, hell, because you can get by with that one. Damn it, ass, hell. Wow. Why don't we just say, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I know you're going to prevail. I know you are the omnipresent. I know you have all this prepared, and that you will bring victory. Hmm. Your lips want to mutter, your tongue wants to mutter wickedness. It says, none sues or calls in righteousness for the sake of doing in, but for the sake of doing injury to others to take some undue advantage. No one goes to law honestly and pleads his case in truth. They trust in emptiness, worthlessness, and futility and speaking lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth evil. It says, they hatch adder's eggs and weave the spider's web he who eats of their eggs dies, and from an egg which is crushed, a viper breaks out, for their nature is ruinous, deadly evil. Hmm? So it's saying that all these things are multiplied. All the works of darkness, all the works of iniquity are multiplied when you give way to those things. Then it says going on, their webs will not serve as clothing, nor will they cover themselves with what they make. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, desolation, and destruction are in their paths and highways. The way of peace they know not, and there is no justice or right in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whoever goes in them does not know peace. Then it says, Therefore are justice and right far from us, and righteousness and salvation do not overtake us. We're meant to be overtaken by righteousness and salvation. We're meant to be ruled by that. We're meant to be in line with that. 
we're meant to be seeking for that. We're not supposed to be conceiving iniquity, bearing uh, sinfulness. You know, we're supposed to be realizing that we belong to God. God doesn't care what you want. He cares what he wants. God is our divine dictator. Well, Sister Deborah, I don't believe that because ain't no man going to tell me what to do. Well, have you forgotten know-it-all independence and 4th of July flag that Jesus came as a man? Oh. Well, I don't care. I'm just going to be serving the Lord and Him only will I serve. I will not be told what to do by any man. I told you Jesus came as a man. What are you going to do with that one? Hmm? Why did God allow him to come in a human form? Hmm? Think about it. Well, I'll just go to God myself. Oh, the God of your own invention. Not the God of the Bible, but the re-imaged God who says, Oh, yes, Petunia, continue in sin. You're so cute when you do that adultery and you're absolutely darling when you thieve and lie and scheme against your neighbor. And you know what? You're just so precious when you commit burglary. And you know what? You're absolutely lovely when you steal cars. Petunia, keep it up. Now, is that the God of the Bible or is that Petunia's invented God? Huh? Well, Petunia, I think by your smell you may be going to hell, but you're doing fine, honey. Why? Because Petunia resists God's divine dictatorship. You know, American people hate to hear the word dictator, and now they've got one. Huh? They just think they're so far above that, and they're great freedoms that have given freedom to let every demon out of hell out of the closet, and let them come crawling to devour their kids. But they hate the word dictatorship and dictator. And they're totally under it right now. Huh? where the dictator, the emperor, is dictating the most wicked, vile corruptions and making them laws that you have to adhere to. So are you free? No. You're nothing but a dupe for the dictator. So why not come under God's dictatorship? Why not let God rule our lives? Why not let God dictate to us what is right and what is wrong? What we should and shouldn't do? Huh? And why not repent of our false freedom. Huh. Why not repent of it? Because it's only a delusion anyway. And what do we have freedom for? Freedom from God in order to sin? You don't get by with sin. It's a lie. It's a deception. It's conceived in hell. Like it says, it only multiplies when you believe this stuff of darkness. Then it says, their feet run to evil, they make haste to shed innocent blood, their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, desolation and destruction are in their paths and highways. The way of peace they know not, and there is no justice or right in their goings. They have made them crooked paths, whoever goes in them does not know peace. Therefore are justice and right far from us, and righteousness and salvation do not overtake us. We expectantly wait for light, but only see darkness for brightness, but we walk in obscurity and gloom. We walk, we grope for the wall like the blind. Yes, we grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the twilight, in dark places, and among those who are full of life and vigor, we are as dead men. We all groan and growl like bears and moan plaintively like doves.